we all want the internet cleaned up if it's got some mucky stuff on there, but uh, there's also a bit of a balancing act, isn't there, with, um, you know, freedom of speech, a waste of police time, and, you know, what you are and aren't allowed to do, basically. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I want to be cautious because you never hear all the ins and outs of these cases, but it does sound like sometimes the balance isn't getting struck right. Maybe there are some occasions where the police are being overzealous. Um, well, there's 13,000 like, of them. Yeah, but, it, but I guess you do also have to recognise that sometimes the police will have to speak to people in order to establish that a crime has not been committed, and you do want the police to act on reports and you can probably also understand the police getting a bit twitchy about hateful stuff online after all the hateful stuff you saw on social media over the summer leading to riots things getting set on fire police officers getting it getting injured so it is a balance um I it is. It's they... true. So, somebody did say to me, which I think is the point you're making, David, that, you know, if uh, if somebody rings the police because they think they're, I don't know, a mother, a father thinks their kid's about going to be beaten up because somebody wrote something on social media um, and this person has a track record of beating kids up, then that might be a reasonable request. So the police go and investigate and they go, actually, no, they, that didn't happen. The person just wrote colloquially they deserve a slap or something like that. So, yeah, that would be an example of where it wasn't unreasonable that the police took the initial knock on the door. But recording it as a non-crime hate incident is another issue altogether, isn't it? Because that suggests that there is something of interest to be recorded. It does, and it sounds like the, the guidelines are being reviewed and maybe need, up, need updated, but there's some confusion around that. I th but I think maybe the bigger issue here is that the police have a bit of an impossible job dealing with social media at the moment, um, and they might not always be getting it right, but I think we need to be asking some serious questions about whether the companies running these platforms are doing all they can to, to, yeah. to create platforms that aren't essentially overrun with all kinds of crime at the moment. True. We're talking here about hate crime, but mm. there's also a huge problem with um, child safety on yep. social media and a, a huge problem with, with fraud. Fraud is now the biggest crime experienced by us here in the UK. Most of it's happening on social media. And so while the police maybe need to be adjusting their approach. I, I, at the moment, I think there's a, that, that there's a bigger question to be asked about, well, what are your metas, your, your TikToks, your, your, your exes doing to, to tackle these things a bit further upstream yeah. so that the police aren't having to wade in in these sometimes clunky ways? I still find it interesting, David, that some people genuinely believe that the whole purpose of social media is that you can say whatever you like, whether that's libelous, whether it's homophobic, whether it is um, incendiary in some kind of way. And, you know, I've tackled people on that. I've done it on social media and said, mate, you might want to take that post down, fella, because that's, that's all shades of wrong, what you've written there, and, you know, somebody might sue you. And then often people double down and go, well, I don't care. Sue me then. It's like, really? Why? Well, you want to have your house taken off you? Why do you want to do that? Yeah. You've literally just made something up about somebody that is demonstrably not true and can clearly uh, litigious in, uh, you know, in, in, in nature. And to some, it, they cannot get their head around the idea that the rules that govern the people that publish the Times or the Mail or the Telegraph are exactly the same rules that govern you as a poster on Twitter. However, it's, uh, it, it's a hard sell, that one. Completely. And, uh, I mean, I think in 2024, we do have to accept that if it's illegal offline, it, it, you know, the, the internet can't yeah. be a law-free place. Um, and, and I, but I, I guess one of the things, when you talk about those people who behave in that way on social media, it does seem that there's something about how these platforms are designed that encourages people to lose the plot of it isn't a hundred percent there's something about it's a, you know, it's a, the, the whole thing of never have a you know i had a couple of arguments uh, i had a sorry i had a couple of mates who had some arguments with each other on text um but it's the same point here really and i said don't argue on text but it's the worst place to argue because you lose all intonation you lose all context and when you commit a set of cold isolated words onto a page 
it looks far worse than if you just said it to somebody in conversation because you can't caveat it in the same way, you can't instantly reply. Um, mm. uh, and these were grown sensible adults and so it's a similar thing isn't it on social media where you know you're, you're in the middle of a, having a heated discussion about politics and you clearly disagree with somebody and when you think it's over and you've got the better of them uh, they just leave you with one word like quote tit or something and then you sit there thinking I'm not having that, so I'll go back and then I'll say something and then all of a sudden World War 3 takes place. Yes, uh, exactly and I think ultimately some of this is just humans needing to grow up and be more sensible. Probably. Some of it I think is also that the way these platforms are designed at the moment yep. um, is kind of designed to bring the worst out in us. To, yeah, yeah. to give you one example, um, I'm sure you've encountered plenty of fake and anonymous accounts on social media oh, saying all kinds of inflammatory things. Some of that will be real people who are hiding behind anonymity so that they've got that kind of impunity to abuse people or defraud people. Some of that is, is foreign governments that are trying to stir up things in the UK by, by using networks of fake accounts to spread lies about people, stir up hatred. And that all creates an atmosphere in which you get more of this, this, this kind of behaviour. Um, Again, we're talking about hate speech here, but these same fake accounts are often spreading scams and frauds yep. and things like that. Um, and if you had more of an expectation on the social media companies to clean up their platforms, tackle things like fake and anonymous accounts, enforce their rules around very young children not using their service, or yep. make those services safe for young children, one or the other, but not but this kind of fudge where they say they're not suitable for young children, but they let them on anyway. They let them on anyway. Yeah, anyone these can get kind of things. That, ultimately, th those are things that the social media platforms should be tackling. And yeah. if they did, the burden on the police, who, yeah, maybe aren't always getting it right, would be reduced because these, these platforms wouldn't be bringing out the worst in everyone. Well, there is that, I suppose. Listen, David, thank you for your time. David Babs, lead consultant at Clean Up the Internet.